So we're going to walk through um, the iron implanter example in the console model library. Um, we'll start with a, a 3D geometry. We can find the free molecular flow interface on the fluid flow branch uh, in the rarefied flow section under free molecular flow here. And then we can, once we've selected that uh, physics, we can click next. Finally, we want to do a stationary study. Click stationary and click finish. So we're going to start the model by um, adding some parameters. I'm going to bring these in from a file on my desktop. And we get a, a few predefined uh, parameters. We could type those in manually too if we wanted to. Uh, we've got various uh, parameters. What the first one is for theta, which is the angle uh, between the wafer normal and the beam line. And then we've got a couple of parameters for different pump speeds in the vacuum system. So we can conveniently uh, change those if we're interested in them. We're going to bring the geometry in from an existing uh, console file to save a little time. Um, and, th and the geometry sequence starts off with an import uh, from an external file. That could be a CAD file. Um, and that just shows the um, exterior surfaces of the vacuum system. Um, then a work plane is defined. Uh, and you can see from uh, the settings here that this particular work plane is defined uh, specifically to, to be at the correct angle um, to the beam line uh, depending on what value of theta we've chosen. So if I go into the parameters and choose uh, theta uh, value of 0 and then head back to that work plane, you'll see the work plane is now vertical um, and similarly um, if I go back and change it back to 30 our work plane will go back to the way it was before. On the work plane, uh, a very simple geometry has been drawn out. It starts off with a, a circle, uh, which has been uh, used to represent the wafer, and then surrounding that is just a square, which represents the, the carrier for the wafer. Uh, that work plane is then extruded. You can see that. Um, if I change this to wireframe to produce a three-dimensional object. Um, and then that three-dimensional extruded object is subtracted uh, from uh, the geometry as a whole uh, to produce a domain uh, which, is, which just simply represents the region in which the molecules flow. So if I change the settings here, you can see um, uh, there's a sort of hollowed out region in the center in this domain. Okay, uh, now we need to set up uh, the, the free molecular flow itself. Um, on the interface level we can change uh, some settings that determine how accurately um, uh, fluxes are computed, um, but we'll just leave the, those with the defaults which are usually fine. Um, we have a molecular flow uh, node which which is on the whole uh, domain that we're modeling in and on that uh, in that domain we can set uh, the temperature of the flow as well as the the molar mass so we'll go ahead and, and change the mean molar mass to two grams per mole uh, because we're interested in the in the flow of hydrogen for this particular model now by default uh, the boundaries are assigned to the wall boundary condition uh, which just uh, sets the outgoing flux J equal to the incoming flux G. So all the molecules uh, uh, are absorbed and then diffusely readmitted uh, by the wall. But we we're interested in having an outgassing wall where uh, additional molecules are, are added uh, to those that, that strike it. Um, so we're going to choose the outgassing wall boundary condition and then to select uh, the boundary that we want to apply this to, we just simply left-click until it's highlighted and then right-click 
uh, and you can see uh, that the boundary of interest turns blue, so our wafer is outgassing. Uh, we don't want to specify uh, how much is outgassing using a, a molecular flux. We could choose a, a number of options here. We want to, to specify the number of SCCM. You could choose a mass flux or the, the total mass flow uh, if you wanted to use those options as well. So we're going to have 30 SCCMs uh, 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 of hydrogen coming off our wafer. We also need to set up the pumps. So we have a vacuum pump boundary condition. Um, there are various options, once again, to, to specify um, how the pump is operating, but we're going to use the pump speed option and type in uh, the parameter that we set up earlier to set the value uh, of the pump speed. Uh, we want to apply the pump, uh, the turbo pump on this boundary, um, and I'm going to add another boundary, another vacuum pump boundary condition using the duplicate feature. Move that selection and add a new selection and change the pump speed to the pump speed cryo. And then I'm going to repeat that process. Duplicate. Oops. Change the selection. Duplicate. Change the selection. Duplicate. Change the selection. The reason I've done this is because uh, the pump speed boundary condition uh, computes uh, an integral over the surface uh, uh, of the pump to, com to work out the area. And so we want a separate uh, selection for each individual pump. For the mesh, um, we can use the default uh, mesh that's controlled by, by the physics in COMSOL, but we're going to just make the mesh slightly finer uh, and just take a look at how that uh, looks. So you can see the mesh is actually uh, pretty reasonable uh, for this demonstration problem.